Good morning. All right. So today we are checking our petri dishes to finish our contamination lab. And one important thing we need to do when we finish our contamination lab is to um, add those pictures in to the lab. So the lab slideshow was made by one of you. And hopefully, unless you were hybrid, um, I made one for you, but hopefully if you were in a group that was shared with you, one of you in the group needs to add these pictures in. And this is one of the rare assignments that I do want you to turn it in. So I do need to press the square arrow to move this into slides as normal. And once I'm in there, I need to take a photo of my Petri dish. I want it to be a close-up photo overhead, not at some funny side angle. And I want it to be oriented so the four sections are kind of perpendicular. Now I already took the photo, so it's in my images from photos, but you could go to your camera directly. There it is. Now I'm going to crop it down. and put it there. And my air photo, I also have that, so plus image from photos. Now you might take it from your camera. So this is the first period air sample that the hybrid students are going to use. So hybrid students, I will drop these photos into your presentation. If as a hybrid student, you didn't Wow, first of all, typo. If you didn't do your surface sample predictions, you're going to lose two points here. Predictions have to happen before the results. So when I go put these photos in, if you didn't make a prediction before we started this, because you didn't check your assignments at all, then you're going to lose those two points automatically. Now for each of the three samples, so we have one, two, three, four, I'm going to copy this photo and I'm going to put it in here and I'm going to double tap and crop it just to the section I care about for this particular slide. So this is slide one. Check. And I'm going to expand the photo to fit in slide one. Wow, the coffee mug might need to be washed. I don't know. What do you think? And then I'll come paste here same thing, I'm going to crop it down to section two. And this is where taking a good photo that's right angled and aligned really makes things nice and easy. Make it big. And what we're going to do in each case is we're going to count how many microbes grew. I'm a little nervous about this one because I have these in my ear right now. But so what can you do? All right, so that's section three. That's disgusting. That's, that's in my ear right now as I'm doing this. So hopefully you made predictions and part of your response will be were your predictions correct. You made two predictions. If one was correct and one was not, you need to name specifically which was. You can't just be like, yes or no. Give me, you know, if both your predictions, predictions were correct, say yes, both were correct. If they were wrong and you realize they were wrong, you don't lose points for that. So what mistakes could have been made? That's pretty easy. So for instance, in your control, if in your control you have growth, why do you have growth? Did you leave it open too long to the air? Did somebody swab in the wrong section? If in sections one, two, or three, nothing is growing, that was probably some kind of mistake. Sometimes people put their swab on the lid instead of the auger and nothing grows on the lid. So we're gonna see some mistakes. If you didn't make mistakes, guess what mistakes others could have made? You're gonna compare your air sample to the surface samples and your air sample to the um, control sample. 
And so here we have the air sample. So if I compare the air sample to the surface samples, I can say some things about it. And if I compare it to the control, the control again is this one. A lot going on there. All right, so hybrids, Zoom or email if you have questions. The other most important thing to do is count. So for instance, for the control, there's a big fat zero. That doesn't always happen. That's what I expected. But there was nothing growing in the control. But you're going to have to zoom in and count on these other samples and do your best. Each circle represents a growth. So this big blob here, that's one growth. That's probably a fungus. But each circle, even these tiny ones, represents a growth. So we need to count how many things grew. Ooh, look at that clear spot between those two. They might have been fighting. So the counting is what takes a while, and this is why being in a group would help. Now, hybrids at home, you weren't in a group, but I did all the pictures and stuff for you, so part of the lab is easier because of me. So do your best. Like I said, ask for help. If you finish, we have makeup work. So that makeup work, if we go back to Google Classroom, you likely have done it and stayed caught up, but if you haven't stayed caught up, we had several assignments. We had the Chapter 10 Gim Kit, which I assigned March 3rd. Play Gim Kit um, and earn some points doing that. Uh, five points just to prove that you know your Chapter 10 questions. Chapter 27 terms due today and the antibiotic resistance writing due tomorrow. And then the Ed Puzzle from Friday is due today. So the Ed Puzzle and the Chapter 27 terms are due today. The Chapter 10 Gim Kit is late. If I don't see any submission today, you start getting zeros. And then the Antibiotic Resistance Writing, that assignment is due tomorrow. So please, 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 if you finish your lab, make sure those back assignments are done. I would hate to drop in a lot of zeros as we get nearer to the end of the marking period, which is at the end of the month. All right, good luck.